Hello, welcome to the 3D Boost channel, where we share tips and tricks about 3D graphics. Today, I will show you how to create a 3D model of a stylized shield from a hand-drawn sketch. The tool that we will use includes Trellis, Blender, Photoshop, 3D Code, Marmoset and Stable Diffusion. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video and leave your questions in the comments. Let's get started. So we are creating a sketch in Photoshop. I set the canvas size to 768 to 768, ensuring quick image generation later. I'm enabling symmetry. And on the new layer, I'm sketching a stylized shield. Pretty rough sketch. To save time, I'll speed up the sketching process in the video. While I'm working on the sketch, let me explain the next steps. Once the sketch is complete, we will load it into ControlNet in Config UI, or you can use standard stable diffusion, and we will generate a stylized 2D image based on our sketch. I add my sketch to Config UI and create a stylized rendered shield based on my sketch. I'm using SDXL model. If you will need my Config UI workflow, leave me a comment and I will send it to you. This is a simple image to image workflow using SDXL model. So I'm using a resolution match with my sketch and Confi renders the shield from sketch to me. Pretty simple image to image workflow. Next, we are using Trellis on hugging face spaces for free. You also can use Mesh AI or Tripper AI. I will leave links in the description. So I'm generating a 3D object from our 3D image. After clicking Generate, I click, I will click Extract GLB, and I will speed up the video to skip the generation wait time. Once done, we get the GLB file and we load it into Blender by going File Import GLTF and selecting the object. Now that the shield is imported, let's refine it. In Blender's edit mode, I'll select all the vertices and press Ctrl M and choose Merge by Distance to remove duplicate vertices. Then I'm using a ZBrush bridge and send the object into ZBrush for refinement. In ZBrush, I use DynaMesh to recalculate the mesh. Now we have around 300,000 points. This allows for some additional sculpting to fix any flaws from Trellis. I have found that ZBrush produces better results for low poly counts than Blender. For instance, when reducing the shield to 1 or 2,000 polygons, the brush retained the shape and topology better than Blender. In Blender, the geometry can slightly distort. In the brush, I'm using high polish brush, trim dynamics, smooth brushes. Using the decimate future, I reduce, I will reduce the polygon to two or three thousand. But now I'm refine my model. But you can don't do it and just. Uh, go to decimate step, if you want to leave it as it is. Ok, I am set the decimation percents using decimation master and after decimation I have pretty good silhouette for pretty low poly count. Ok, I back, I'm back into the Blender and I must export the texture from Trellis to my hard drive. 
OK. So I create a UV channel for my new decimated model, and I'm using Rhizome UV to quickly generate the unwrap, automatic unwrapping. So I'll speed up the video here as well. OK, I also decided to manually add a seam on the cross in the center of the shield to reduce distortion, but this is optional. You could stick with automatically generated UV. While this workflow isn't entirely game ready, it demonstrates the process and you can make your own adjustment based on the level of detail or optimization needed for your project or pipeline. So I make the seam manually in Rhizom UV and unwrap and pack it again. And after it, I'll import it back into Blend. Now I must export the decimated model to my hard drive. And model from Trelease. Later I want to bake the texture from Trelease into my new model with new UV to transfer the Alpido map. So I bring the model from Trelease with this texture into Marmoset toolback as well as my new decimated model. In my bake project I use as a high poly shield from Trelease with textures and as a low poly shield my new shield, decimated shield. So I will bake albedo map, bake, so now I transferred the albedo map from Trellis shield into my new shield. And now I want to bake some normal maps from my high poly shield from ZBrush into my new shield. And I replace the shield from Trellis by shield from ZBrush high poly to bake good normals. Okay. As you see, now my low poly shield is pretty cracked. And now I'm using a normal map in material to show you that the normal map bakes pretty well. And now my shield have good normals. OK, after that I switch to 3D code and import new model with new albedo texture from Marmoset. OK, after it. I will export the projection of the model into an external editor, Photoshop. So after it I export projection from Photoshop again into ConfUI, but this is new ConfUI workflow with upscaling one workflow. I am using this uh, workflow to make shield from this to shield like this. This is a projection of my front view and I want to bring it back into Photoshop and replace it right now. OK. If I didn't restart the my 3D code, uh, it will be placed automatically. But now I must match my upscale sheet to my old sheet. OK, I'm Ctrl S in Photoshop and after refreshing the, through the code, I'll received my upscale version of the shield. We can see some drawbacks from generating the frontal texture. This can be cleaned up in directly in 3D code, which provides excellent tool for hand painting textures. It offers a wide range of brush setting, pressure sensitivity for tables, tables and seamless Photoshop layer editing. At this stage, you can finish the process by refining the textures manually in 3D code. Like this. But I would like to demonstrate a pipeline using stable projector tools. This application uses neural networks for texturing. First, I will remove the default 3D model and insert our shield and set up control net. OK. I switch the control net model from CDXL to 1.5 stable diffusion model. 
Then I import the texture and start working with the shield. Let's say I want to repaint the central gem, this ruby gem. I'll mask the area and use in paint to specifically regenerate this section. Okay, I masked it. Uh, adjust denoising strength, for example, for 50%. Okay, now I must add a prompt and I will try uh, generate new image. Batch count to 2 and click generate art. I'll speed up it a bit and I have two examples of new games. I will slightly retouch the mask to match my new game into shield more. Ok, for example I also can use color type of my brush to paint on my shield, like in 3D code. Stable projectors also supports projection from multiple cameras and this is a good feature, but uh, we won't cover this here. I will show you how to tweak specific areas like that ruby. For example, uh, if there is some clutter in the left section of the shield, I'll use no color mode to paint a mask. Mm, okay, this enables in painting. So I tweak my prompt, check if control net is good, and I'm clicking generate art. The process is layer based and it allows you to mix some layers from the right and mix it with previous generations. And I will speed up workflow. Artifacts still occur, but this demonstrates the overall workflow. So on this point you can refine the model further or finalize the project. Stable projectors uh, also allows direct painting on the 3D model or UV maps using basic colors like 3D code. For this example we will keep it simple. I also recreate some areas, regenerate these areas, like you can use it in auto generate in Photoshop, uh, AI generating in Photoshop. I... So the goal was to quickly create a vibrant and simple model with the help of neural networks. The process includes generating mask, making iterative adjustments and refining specific parts of the texture. Of course you could generate larger portions of the texture or explore other workflows which could be topics of a future video on stable projectors about stable projectors in my channel. Ok, export the final textures to Blender. Ok, I will import my base color texture and connect it to base color socket in principle base DF node. Also additionally I will add a texture with my normal map. Don't forget to set it color space to non color and then add a normal map node to connect it to our principal BSDF node. Ok, with this largely automated process we've taken a 3D sketch and transformed it into a 3D shield. The result is a reasonably detailed model with a good texture and tolerably topology. This version has about 3000 triangles, decent for many use cases. Originally, the release model had about 18000 triangles. And that is the workflow. We have gone from a simple sketch to a 3D game ready object. What do you think of this approach? Let me know in the comments if you would make any changes or improvements. Feel free to ask questions as well, I'll be happy to answer. If you found this video helpful, please support it with a like and subscribe to the channel, so you won't miss the new tips and tutorials on 3D graphics. See you in the next video on 3D Boost.